Hello everyone, this is KP the Math G. Uh, we're talking about rectilinear motion. We have been doing derivatives for some time now and we are going to continue that for at least at least a couple more times and then we're probably going to get into uh, the other, you know, the anti-derivatives and so on, which we'll get into later. Uh, we'll probably do three parts of this. One is dealing with a position function. Another is dealing specifically with uh, a projectile being tossed up or something like that. Uh, and then the third one would probably be a uh, velocity um, graph and we want to interpret that velocity graph. So that's what I have in mind for the three parts. Probably most likely in that order. Uh, this problem is talking about a position function. Um, before we get into the lesson, let's kind of give an idea of what in the world is rectilinear motion. We're going to do this problem in just a little bit but rectilinear motion is if a point P is moving along a line L, the motion is rectilinear. Now P could move right, P could move left. When we have a position function such as this, okay, then in this case really it's not a straight line as you can tell by this exponent of 3 okay um, it's likely a curve that starts up here comes down and comes up something like that it's really a curve but in calculus we call it a line and P is moving along this curve or line okay this is a function with relation to time as you can well tell alright and so we just need to recognize that first of all you always are generally start with a position function we usually call it S when you take the derivative of S which I'm going to show you right here if you take the derivative of S at T that is the same as V at T V at T being the velocity equation. If this velocity is positive, that is greater than zero, the particle is moving to the right. If V at T, the velocity equation, is, or the velocity is negative, the particle is moving to the left. And that's basically what we're talking about. If the velocity is zero, the particle has stopped. It's kind of like if, a, if in a projectile the velocity goes on until it gets to the top and then that's where the velocity is zero. We'll get into that one in the next lesson. But right now, this is what we're considering. The Later on, we'll talk about the velocity of the uh, I mean the derivative of the velocity which is acceleration and we're going to compare those two later on in another lesson and that that's really maybe a part four then uh, because I do want to make a comparison here but right now we're looking at this is the position function so it says the, posi the, the position function s of a point on p of a line is given by s at t is equal to t cubed plus 16t squared or minus 16t squared plus 96t plus 12 with t in seconds and s at t in meters. So, okay, if we take the derivative of this, then it's going to be in meters per second. All right, when is the point p moving to the right? Now, when I see that right there moving to the right, I want to take this derivative, I want v at t, I want v at t, or at whatever, at some number, at some number, 
to be greater than zero. So that's what we want to look at. Now, you remember when we did uh, maxes and mins and so on? We found critical numbers, didn't we? All right, and, and then that's where the, at those critical numbers is usually where we would find our local maxes or our local mins, or even absolute maxes and absolute mins. But, and this is the same idea here, except this time we're finding velocity here. Again, we want the velocity to be positive. Otherwise, it's moving to the left. All right, if it's at zero, it's stopped. Okay, so that's what we're looking for right here. So we want to take this derivative here, so let's do that. All right, so S prime at T is really v at t. Alright, so let's do that. That is 3t squared minus 16t okay, plus 96. Now remember the derivative of a constant is 0. This is the equation of the velocity. The velocity equation right here. Now we want to find out if this is where this is positive. Okay, so what we have to do here is we need to set this equal to zero, and this is not 18 or not 16. I wrote it down incorrectly the first time. Uh, I had it a different number. I changed that number. This is actually 18. And this makes this, well, I hate when I change back and forth from different colors, but that's okay. We can handle it. Now that's better. The reason I want that to be 18 is that I can factor out a 3 now. That makes the factoring a lot easier. And again, remember, if something doesn't factor, you have other ways of figuring out what T is. All right. In other words, you can use the quadratic formula. You can complete the square. Uh, but it is nice if you can factor. So here we go. V at t. V at t. All right. Now I'm gonna just simply going to take out a 3 here. All right. This is going to be 6t plus, and I want to say... Alright, whoa, well that made this two times, oh guys, I'm telling you, two times 18 is 36. Okay, uh, i tell you what, if I, okay, so now when I take out 36, a uh, 3 out of 36, that's going to make this uh, now 18. Oh, well, you know what, I, you know I do know how to count, I do know how to multiply and divide, so bear with me here, okay, uh, I do know how to do this, I don't know if you've ever gotten in one of these laws before, but I have a few times, but, you know, I trained myself to learn how to get things right, okay, alright, so bear with me. Stay in tune with me. I'm going to get this right. All right, now plus, all right, now uh, three and let's see, two, yeah, 32. All right, now that can be factored. All right, I'm just going to bring this up over here. And if I have to flip over the board, I will. But okay, so here we, here we have this right here. We have V at T. All right, is equal to, all right, so now uh, three times, and I believe this can be factored, T minus, T minus. All right, minus times a negative is, um, a minus times a negative is a positive 32, and then if I add two negatives, I still have my negative, and these are four times eight. Now. What I want to do at this moment, I want to set the velocity equal to zero, all right? So then if I do that, 
I have 3 times t minus oh, t minus 4 times t minus 8 equal to 0. Well, if we divide by 3, we know what that's going to what's going to happen there. So now we're just left with t minus 4 times t minus 8 equal to 0. Let me get something that writes a little bit stronger than that. It looks like I'm losing my blue color here. It's streaking a little bit. So that just simply means that t minus 4 equals 0 or t minus 8 equals 0. Remember this is time now. Alright, so, oh yeah, I have to explain something here. Uh, t is equal to 4, or t, and, and you can just write the answer from here. You don't have to do everything I'm doing here. Alright, so t equals 4, or t equals 8. Uh, it is within the realm, in between t equals 2 and t equals 10. So what we're wanting to do, uh, these are what we call our critical numbers, okay? That's what we just found, okay? And so what we're trying to do is we're going to set up a partition between 2 and 10. So we're going to put 2, 4, 8, and 10 in this interval, and we want to try this out. Let's flip the board, 2, 4, 8, and 10. Okay, so here we go. Uh, keep in mind that we had to find the derivative to get the velocity and then set the velocity equal to zero and then solve. Alright, so that's what we did. Alright, so here we go. Whoops. Alright, bear with me as I flip this over. Alright, so what we had, we had this interval from 2 to 10, this is up oh, 10, including 10, okay, all right, there we go, and we found just now t is equal to 4, or t is equal to 8, all right, from the velocity equation, all right, and in other cases, this would be where you would find your maxes or mins, but this is not what we're doing here at this point now. So let's see, this is what we're doing here is we want to find, remember what we're looking for. Where, where is B at T greater or some number? Where is that interval? where v at t is greater than zero. Okay, so here's two, here's ten, alright, uh, okay, well, let's see, four, somewhere right in here, alright, and eight, somewhere right in here. Okay, now, we have the interval, we have actually one, two, three, areas that we're looking at. Three partitions. We're looking at from two to four and I don't want to include that because I'm including four here. Uh, uh, you know. And the other, well let's see, we can do it. Uh, well it doesn't matter. Also between four and eight. Okay between 8 and 10. Alright. Uh, I don't know. I think I have a practice where if, you know, uh, and probably we could include the 4 here if we wanted to, but not include it right here. Okay? You know, in other words, not include it twice. I don't know. Whatever your teacher or professor or whoever teaches you this tells you to do, you just do that. Okay? Uh, so that is kind of where we are right now, okay? Um, okay, uh, let's go ahead and look at this. Alright, so what I want to do, get a different color, 
is I want to pick a number between 2 and 4. So I'll write I'm going to pick 3. Here between 4 and 8, we can pick any number we want. Oh, well, let's see. Why not just pick 5? Okay. Alright, and then somewhere between 8 and 10, obviously 9 would be what we would pick here. Okay. Alright, so that's what we're doing here. And let's see, our velocity equation, remember this is S prime at T, which is B at T. We remember that was 3 times T minus 4 times T minus 8. Wasn't it? Okay, that's what we found right there. Now what we want to do is plug in, let's just start with 3. Now, again we're looking for positive. Okay, when is the velocity positive? That means if it's positive, the particle P is moving, the point P is moving to the right. So that's what we're determining right here. So here's what we're doing. V at 3. All right, 3 times 3 minus 4, 3 minus 8. Now, what we're looking at now is not what the answers are, but what the signs are. We know this is positive. 3 is automatically positive. 3 minus 4 is negative. 3 minus 8 is negative. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So we know that the particle is moving to the right anywhere between 2 and 4. Now I believe here 4 and 8, this is where the velocity is equal to 0. All right, it changes, probably going to change direction between 4 and 8. All right, let's check that out. Uh, let's, let's go with V then at 5. V at 5 is equal to, all right, we're just going to go back to that 3 times 5 minus 4 times 5, oops, 5, 5 minus 8. All right. This is positive, of course. This is negative. I mean positive, I'm sorry. And 5 minus 8 is negative 3, so that's negative. Alright, positive times positive times negative is negative. So between 4 and 8, alright, the particle is now moving to the left. That t equals 4 to t equals 8. Somewhere between those two times, the particle is moving to the left between t equals 2 and t equals 4 the particle is moving to the right okay that's what we found so far and usually here again at um, t equals 8 the velocity is 0 in other words the particle has, has stopped it is likely that we're going to get a plus sign here let's try it and see all right, so V at 9, somewhere between 8 and 10, all right, is equal to, all right, 3 times 9 minus 4, 9 minus 8. 3 times 9 minus 4 is positive. 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 is positive. 9 minus 8 is 1. 1 is positive. This is positive here. We don't want to have a 3 here. Positive and positive and positive is indeed positive. All right, so where is, well, I don't know. I, I, I'm just thinking that the way that the author has this answered, I'm going to write it the way they have it, okay? All right, and again, check with your professor on that or your teacher on that. Uh, and I will try to find an answer myself in case you want to put a comment down that's all well and good we're not looking where the particles moving left all right we know that the particle is moving right here and right here all right so uh, how can we say this the particle point is moving right 
uh, on the interval comma four union with eight let me look at that uh, yeah and um, that's kind of the way I'm not you know that's probably what I'm seeing right here that's this is the way they address that all right on the intervals between two and four. Another way that can be written this, or this can be written is T is between, and again, probably it could be T is between two and four, and again, union with that T is between eight and ten. Uh, again, is this trivial that we need to have an equal to sign on the 4? I don't know. This is actually when the velocity is 0. So maybe that's probably what's going on. The velocity is 0 here. And that may be what, why that is not included in part of the answer. It's not moving at all. It's just sitting still. It's changing direction. And so... The particle is moving to the right between 2 and 4 seconds. After that, between 4 and 8 seconds, it's moving back to the left. And between 8 and 10 seconds, it's moving back to the right again. I don't know what happens at t equals 0. We're not given that. I'm not, I don't know what happens beyond 10 seconds. We're not given that. Okay? So we're just given this interval here between 2 and 10 here all right including 2 and including 10 so that is what we do we just generally pick a point between these two numbers each time and then we just kind of determine and generally speaking you know I say generally speaking depending on the nature of the of s from the beginning there is, it's either going to be negative, positive, negative, or positive, negative, positive. I say that generally speaking, that's probably not always true. So keep that in mind. So keep in mind that what we've just done, we asked, the, we answered the question, when is the particle moving to the right? That's when the velocity is greater than zero. That's when the velocity is positive. So we're looking for those times, those intervals. So between two and four, the particle is moving to the right. In between four and eight, the particle's moving to the left. We don't care about that answer really. We just really care about between two and four and between eight and ten, the particle is moving to the right. And so you can probably answer it either way all right so that is kind of where we're at with this one that type of problem all right next time we're going to look at projectile motion that's going to be in the form of a parabola okay that is curved concave downward so for the time being, this is what we've looked at. This is KP, the Math G, hoping and wishing that you will have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much for being patient with me. Uh, again, you have the subscribe button. If you want to press that, go ahead and do that. Please do that. And then, of course, if you have a comment that you would like to make after I process this video, you can make comments, okay? All right, so again, KP the Math G, wishing you a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much.